Welcome Tech Brothers Amir. In this video, we are going to take a look into the billing. So I was doing this uh, uh, debate to myself like, hey, either I should create the video on billing first or create the video on these run times first or components. So then I came to a point like, okay, if uh, <laughs> I will go ahead and uh, just uh, start creating the video on the run times and uh, how they work and everything. And somebody probably might uh, miss some uh, uh, configuration and uh, leave them uh, the resources on for a long time. They can also get into trouble with the billing. So I think billing is also important. And uh, we are going to start with the billing. So you will have good idea when you're creating these uh, different uh, components. Um, Azure Synapse Analytics support multiple compute engines and each one has its own billing model. Uh, you only pay for what you use but the cost structure depends upon the engine you are working with. So here is one of the engine type what we have here runtime we have is called dedicated SQL pool and uh, formerly called the SQL uh, data warehousing. Now computer per hour data warehouse unit base so that's what the type of compute is and then storage so whatever you save you will be paying per terabyte per month. Now billing starts when the pool is running if you pause the pool then you will save the money so there is no charges. So in this example let's say you have this one node DW100C and the billing will be almost 1.20 dollar per hour if you run for five hours you are going to pay around six dollars so here are some uh, types of those uh, nodes here you can see that we have dw100c that's a one node you have uh, 60 distributions per compute node and you have a memory a 60 mem uh, gb memory per data warehousing as uh, the number increases uh, you will be paying more money so you can see right there there are two nodes here you have uh, uh, 30 distributions per compute node and then you have 600 uh, gb ram there now as uh, you, uh, you uh, i will show you how this exactly is the change and how it is calculated uh, right now there is no price here but i'm going to show you in the calculator now think about that uh, the, the dedicated sql pools so you are already telling how many uh, nodes you need uh, to run your query so you are running uh, these uh, SQL uh, pool and then uh, using them for maybe 30 minutes 40 minutes or hour uh, and then uh, you can pause that uh, so billing will be calculated accordingly depending on that uh, configuration uh. now with the server less uh, SQL pool uh, what happen uh, you run the query and uh, it is a per TB scan uh, so let's say you are uh, doing one terabyte uh, scanning it is around five dollars uh. so minimum ch uh, charges is uh, around 10 MB per query and that's what it will charge you ideal for ad hoc queries uh, over ADLS uh, files uh, select only needed the column to reduce the cost so, so that's a great tip because uh, if you have a large size file you are not uh, you don't need everything from there so avoid uh, select star from that uh, file right so use uh, the columns that you need example scanning 200 GB of data at $5 per terabyte is around $1 so if this file let's say is a 200 GB or maybe you have multiple files and that total comes to 200 GB of data then when you run it you're going to pay $1 and other pool you have is called Apache Spark pool so here you will uh, it's uh, the compute is per week core per hour that's the rate you will be applying and it will be calculated depending on the week core per hour start billing when the cluster is running so every time you need to run the run book the cluster has to be run so it will start and then you will start paying the money can auto scale cores and executors so that's a great uh, actually when uh, you don't need uh, let's say you start with the two uh, nodes and uh, you can auto scale to 10 so if uh, your notebooks only use two you will be paying for two but uh, if it does need more it will automatically add those nodes and you will be paying for more uh, no nodes so uh, auto scale is really helpful we will do a lot of demos on auto scale how to adjust uh, the different settings and everything now use on-demand auto scaling for batch jobs so you don't want to have uh, let's say 10 uh, nodes here with a large size configuration uh, when uh, maybe your job is only going to use uh, uh, one or two nodes uh, so in that case uh, you can uh, adjust that and uh, also we will study those like okay, you run the notebooks you take a look how many nodes it's used uh, and uh, then uh, you can always come back uh, and uh, also even maybe sometime you have a large number of uh, nodes and uh, you calculate the uh, cost and maybe it is okay to use it so you have to kind of you know depend upon your notebook what it is doing then you see how many nodes is used and how much time it is uh, uh, taken to run that and then adjust accordingly 
So in example 8, we have 8 week course running for 1 hour and in this case you have 8 week course per hour that's 2 to 3 dollar. And uh, next what we have here is called the Synapse Pipelines. So Pipelines is Azure Data Factory Pipelines where you run the activities and the per activity execution that's how the charges are calculated. You can use the copy activity then you pay for the copy activity but if you use the data flow then the charges are per week or per hour spark base because in the data flow you have to tell like uh, how many nodes you will be using what are the number of week cores on those nodes and uh, then uh, every time you run the data flow it uh, start a cluster a spark cluster and uh, then uh, it execute and you have a uh, time to live and all that you can always set uh, to pause it or terminate uh, after you are done with the execution of a uh, data flow now there are a lot of videos I have on the data flow, how to adjust uh, performance and also the cost uh, in my Azure Data Factory Pipeline uh, playlist. Now data movement uh, per uh, DIU per hour like Azure Data Factory, uh, use when trigger, copy, notebook, store procedure, each uh, count as one run. So there are different activities in this uh, pipelines and the charges are different depending upon which uh, activities you are using. So I will show you how to calculate. Uh, and the final comes to the storage cost ADLS 2 Gen 2. Now data store per uh, GB per month and uh, file access uh, based on the transactions. Uh, Synapse Studio and the serverless queries use your uh, attach ADLS uh, Gen 2 account. Uh, storage uh, billing uh, happens uh, there, uh, not in the Synapse itself. Uh, so it depends on how much data you have saved in that ADLS to Gen, Gen 2 account. Now we know, uh, we understand some part of that, okay, uh, what are the different run times here, what are the other components uh, uh, that uh, will uh, include in the cost. So we understand there are three run times. Uh, actually, I, I have missed one of that is called the Azure Data Explorer. So for that one also, uh, the cost I will show you. And then the rest of that we know that the Azure Data Factory Synapse Pipelines and the cost for the storage. Now let's go to the pricing here and I will put the link in the description so you can take a look from here. So for each of the component we have in the Azure Synapse so we can go here and take a look. So data integration if you remember those pipelines where I was talking about like hey copy activity how much you pay and all that so you can see right there. Uh, here is uh, your uh, data movement, uh, you know, DIUs, uh, so data integration units, uh, so 0.25 per hour and uh, that is, you can always uh, change in your copy activity like how many DIUs you are using and it is a 0.25 per DIU, DIU per hour and uh, you can see uh, if you, it is uh, Azure hosted uh, IR or it is self hosted, uh, in self hosted it is uh, less price uh, so you can see that because the uh, it is your computer uh, or uh, it like you have maybe the computer in cloud but uh, you have uh, uh, all you will be charged also for your the VM on which you have installed the self hosted uh, now if it is a uh, your own machine uh, you know still you will be paying some charges for that now here is the uh, pipeline activity integration runtime uh, so dollar one and the dollar zero zero five per hour you can see that uh, you know uh, different rates there and uh, I don't think so at this time it is uh, very important uh, to show you all that because uh, you might not even understand what exactly is the activity how the data flow looks like uh, but you can see different components are charged different when you are using those uh, pipelines. Uh, I will uh, create the pipelines and show you we come back actually and uh, then uh, we can re revise this whole uh, topic here again but uh, try not to use uh, too many data flows uh, in your uh, demos right now and uh, try to use a copy activity and with a small configuration and small files. So here is the serverless uh, and uh, you will be charged a dollar five per terabyte of data processed. Uh, so remember that we had a tip where we, I told you guys don't use a select asterisk. Uh, so try to use uh, or extract what you need uh, from those files. Uh, and uh, then in the dedicated, uh, if you remember that we were talking about like, hey, I have this uh, DW100C and uh, that's uh, uh, different uh, D, D data warehouse units, so, so it's uh, called 100. If you use for whole month, uh, 24 by 7, you're going to be paying uh, this much, you know. But uh, as I told you, you can always pause it, so you don't have to use all uh, month. And uh, that's exactly what I will do. Even whatever the uh, resources or compute I have for my dedicated SQL pool, I always pause them after I run my queries. So they, they can get really expensive if you go further here, the latest last one. So if you see right there, you are $262,000 uh, 
uh, and uh, here uh, if you will do some commitments uh, then uh, it comes uh, down for one year commitment and three year commit commitment. Uh, so here we were talking about the PySpark and the billing is here you if you are using memory optimized or GPU accelerated uh, uh, type of uh, um, computer and here you will be paying 0.143 per week or per hour and here is the you will be paying a little more uh, you know depending on the configuration you are using uh, and uh, then uh, you have this uh, log and telemetry analytics remember that uh, azure uh, uh, explorer that's uh, the rate uh, you will be paying for that one so azure sign up data explorer compute is a point uh, uh, 219 per week or per hour and uh, the standard LR, uh, lrs uh, data stored uh, in that uh, disk is uh, 23 dollar and four cents uh, per terabyte per month uh, so you have all that you can play with it and uh, if you need to further analyze uh, uh, you can uh, go on this uh, calculator and uh, then uh, see that uh, here uh, what i did i selected uh, uh, there are all those services here if you see so I will put the link in this uh, description as well. So you will select a synapse and uh, what happened uh, once you hit synapse here uh, and then uh, it's going to show you right there. So you see right there it is showing me hey you will be charged 6418. It automatically took some configuration and uh, then uh, it uh, told me what I will be paying. So here uh, uh, let's say right here. It says that hey DWU blocks for dedicated SQL pool. Let's say in my case, if I want to have only uh, uh, the DWU, DWU and uh, the it's uh, going to be hundred, and uh, I know that I'm not going to run on 24 by 7 for whole month. Uh, uh, that rate is uh, uh, 1.510 per hour. So in this case, maybe I will run these queries every day. Maybe I will run for a uh, uh, only one hour you know and uh, then uh, I have 30 hours so I'm gonna go put 30 hours for whole month and now you see that the whole for the whole month I will be paying 30 uh, 45 dollars for my dedicated SQL pool but this is very small uh, uh, unit or node if you see that because uh, if I have shown you here and uh, see it has only 60 GB RAM it has a distributions per compute engine a node is a 60 and uh, that's a one computer node so you can see that it's a small configuration maybe your sql queries will run just fine but you need to take a look and run it and see how exactly uh, it is behaving and then maybe you can change to 200 and all that now if you do 200 then uh, you will have ma more memory and uh, you know more power but you will be 90 dollar and i'm uh, running one hour uh, and then i'm pausing it now in the storage you can see that it is a let's say one terabyte so you see 23 dollars here and uh, then um, um, i have uh, the serverless uh, uh, sql pool and uh, then uh, let's say if i will run my queries on different files and uh, i think i will do 20 terabyte uh, for a whole month so this is going to be hundred dollar then i have apache spark pool and uh, then uh, here you can see that we have different node size and uh, let's say i have four v cores and 32 gb and uh, i will have only two nodes in this case uh, if i will run for 30 hours so one hour per day my notebooks run and then uh, i will be paying 33 dollars so not bad and then uh, i have hardware uh, accelerated so if i use a different type of uh, you know configuration and uh, then uh, in that case uh, i will be paying a very large amount here so you have to see you know um, we will probably i don't know depend upon your uh, load uh, totally depend upon your node uh, so if you have a lot of load you might be actually going with the large configuration and uh, then uh, or you will be going with the hardware accelerated uh, uh, node type so so it depends uh, uh, maybe uh, in this case let's say if you do this right okay here is a 30 hours now think about scenario you went with this large configuration but uh, and you have two nodes but instead of taking third one hour per day maybe your notebooks start taking only 10 minutes so in that case uh, you are uh, using maybe three or uh, five hours per month so then uh, you see that the prices are very small it depends how many hours you will use and uh, always pause that you know uh, you don't need to let them run if uh, you are done with the work and then here is a data explorer pool and you have like okay you have a data collected per day you have a hard cache retention then you have a total retentions per day you have estimated data compare compression and all those different configuration and you can see that 
it comes uh, to the cost uh, $1,685. For, uh, we, we have done everything here. But here is the, our uh, data explorer. You can also change that. Maybe I just use for only uh, one hour per day. And uh, then cost is uh, reduced for data explorer as well. And uh, you can also do data management, you know, so you can change uh, as well. So you can do a lot of things. Uh, so this is all I'm calculating. I actually honestly, uh, don't have uh, right now like exact amounts and everything so I don't know uh, what I'm calculating but uh, coming back from here you can uh, pretty much all those diff different uh, services uh, you have in Azure Synapse Analytics uh, you can go and uh, put the values in that and uh, then uh, you can calculate how much money you will be spending when you will be using different uh, run times in Azure Synapse uh, Analytics uh, and how much memory uh, sorry how much storage you have and uh, uh, maybe sometime you will not be using pipelines at all you know so or maybe you will be using a lot of pipelines so in this uh, you have activity runs uh, uh, for uh, those pipelines you have created uh, for you have data flow data movement sorry here then I have your integration run times that you will be using uh, so you have a uh, external uh, uh, integration runtimes of self-hosted IRs and all that so you can uh, use all those different configurations here and uh, tell uh, like uh, uh, calculate the estimated uh, um, amount of uh, cost for your per month and here is your data flow so in the pipelines we have mostly two type of um, uh, activities one is copy activity and other normal activities and one is the data flow when you run the data flow it always create the spark cluster under the hood and uh, that's what you have to tell like uh, eight week cores and uh, then uh, how many instances uh, maybe one instance uh, and if we run that uh, uh, for uh, 20 hours per month uh, then we will pay this much money i, I will suggest you know it's, it's a great idea to go through this practice and uh, see how exactly um, you will be using Azure Synapse in your scenarios and then you can compare let's say you have you're migrating from on-premises to the cloud or you are you are using Azure SQL databases for your data warehousing and now you're like hey guess what I need to move to the Azure Synapse and then yes great idea you know you can do a lot more things here but also you can compare the cost you know you can come here and put every numbers here for your different um, configurations uh, your pipelines uh, your notebooks uh, uh, how many hours they will run uh, you know and uh, once you have all that information you can calculate and uh, see what will be your uh, total cost per month to run the azure synapse analytics in your environment i thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel and i will see you guys in the next video i know i haven't gone to each and little detail because they, it need a whole lot of time and i think you will explore by yourself it's very very uh, easy to put those numbers depending on your needs and get the total amount i, I will see you guys in the next video